Hey, what's up, Leron here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can paint without a lot of experience and as a beginner, a beautiful painting with the concept of, let's say, a big idea. So I'm going to show you what it is in just one second, but first, let's go through the drawing stage. So we have this beautiful, beautiful mountainscape, um, one of the types of scenes that I think are great for beginners because there's a lot of looseness and fluidity in it, kind of like birds and different elements where there is some structure but you have a lot of freedom within those structures. Uh, and the way I approach even the drawing stages, look at how loose I am. All I care about is getting the overall frame of the mountains, kind of get a basic understanding of where the light and shadow are, but I am actually making sure not to go overboard with defining everything, because what it's going to do is stifle me. And I want the next stage to really be free and loose. You'll see this is one of the loosest things you'll, you'll, you'll have watched. Now this scribbly line I just put in the corner, that means that's going to be an ambiguous corner. I'm not going to put too much information there. It's going to be left to the viewer's imagination. Okay. The one thing I am taking care to change, and you'll notice, is that in just one second, the clouds pattern from behind, the way I do it is I just moved it a little bit down so that it has more of a, of a, of a grace as it works with the mountain ridge. Okay, so I basically moved that. Other than this, the entire thing is the same. We have two mountain peaks. These are kind of our focal points and the rest supports that, which is why I have an ambiguous lower corner, for example, and so on. And this is it. The drawing stage is pretty much done and look at how swoosh I'm working really freely. Now, I'm starting wet and wet here because here is the big idea I want to impart on you. The big idea is have one staple technique, watercolor technique in the painting and let that carry the entire thing. And what is it going to be here? Wet and wet. So the way that you'll notice the sky transitions into the clouds is beautiful. It is loose. It is fun. It is freedom. And I want to use that as the big idea for my painting and everything else supports that. To get that gradual transition, we need lots of water. We need uh, ideally even more water than I used here. If you can dip the paper in water, wet both sides. I just kind of took it in a spontaneous way, but this is one other way you could have done this. Um, and even pre-mix, if you want a lot of blue and dip it into the, like, let it really flow. But for our purposes here, I just pre-wet some areas. Now look at what happens. As soon as I put the blue in, of course, it's going to move and blend. This is the line I'm after, that lower section. And once I put the blue, it's going to seep through there and move down and create the edge of the cloud. And believe it or not, that's the technique the idea that will carry the entirety of the painting. And even if you're not as experienced in what comes next, by doing this, tons of water and then thick paint onto that wet and wet, you'll be able to carry the entire painting. My angle isn't too steep here. It's about five to eight degrees because I don't want the water to move too much down into the white area of the cloud and I do have some runners there and I'm taking care of them as well but for the most part it didn't run too badly. Now this is the point where the paper is so wet you need to mix some dark paint. I'm using thalo blue as my basis for everything here alongside a bit of neutral tint at this stage to quickly darken it and at a later stage and here I am lifting back those runners at a later stage I'll introduce some other colors but for now all we really care about is the thalo blue. Now the way you do this where you start where you it doesn't really matter I want you to think about the big idea what's the big idea this beautiful transition from blue to white and have that as a soft transition and you're set the mountains are full of abstract details that are going to support it now I took it one step further and I'm actually using the wet area as a, as a pathway to start painting the mountains. You're going to see this in one second. I let that area join into the mountains, thus creating soft borders. You will see this especially on the left side in just one second. But first, we need to take care of that beautiful gradual transition on the right side. So again, I'm extending some of the water. Look at how it seeps through in this beautiful 
pattern, linear, tons of little fibers that blend in. These are the kinds of things I cannot tell you exactly how to do. You have to experience it on your own. But once you experienced it, you'll be able to create this beautiful effect quite easily and have that carry the entirety of the painting. Because sometimes we get so narrow sighted and we end up painting everything shape by shape by shape by shape, which is fine. It's a good way of practicing value matching and color matching. But then we lose sight of the overall gift that is watercolor. And what is that gift? Big, vast washes with smooth transitions. If you include one here, it's gonna be magical. Now look at what I'm doing with that shadow on the left side. I'm painting it while the background is still wet. What do we get? A smooth edge between that dark shadowy side of the mountain and the background. They're gonna flow together. What's gonna be created? A smooth edge, thus a more ambiguous impression that supports the big idea of these beautiful loose areas. We will get some sharp contrasts, make no mistake, but that's not where we'll get them. We'll get them in other places. And the overall balance of all of these ideas together is gonna to work beautifully. And this is how you see some people merging the object in the foreground with the background selectively in some areas to create a not only balanced picture, but also a good looking picture. That's a part of it. Now look at what I'm doing here. I'm dipping into the shadow with a moist brush to create that bit of cloudy effect, right? That we see here. It's just such a beautiful way to go. Uh, and we're gonna continue building around that. Notice what I'm doing. I'm working from the background onto the shadow and into the mountain. And that way I make sure to preserve the wetness and bring it with me inside the mountains themselves and preserve that whole beautiful idea of the smooth edges that are then supported by a few very small details that just about anyone can paint. Now, I wanna continue with this beautiful wet and wet after a sponsor break. So as you guessed it, this video is sponsored by me and my courses at Books. So if you've been enjoying the content and especially this kind of a video, be sure to check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course. It's gonna show you exactly how to paint like I'm showing you right here loosely, beautifully, spoiler to the end result, and you're, you'll get it. You'll get it. A bunch of exercises that lead you down a path of you understanding how to paint loosely. I can tell you how to do every single thing, but I can give you a few tools that you can use to for your own benefit and then create the beautiful loose paintings you want. Let me shut my phone down. And if you're already feeling good about that, be sure to check out the Watercolor Realism course, another great one that will show you how to create a realistic impression, not once, not twice, but rather every single time. It's something that you can reproduce uh, and create just beautiful realistic impression. A few concepts, very simple to follow, and you'll get it and then you can take it and make it your own. So if you wanna learn any of that, or if you want to get a book of mine, the uh, How to Sketch book it is one of my top favorites. There's also How to Shade. There's also Sketching People, How to Sketch People, a bunch of them. Check them out on Amazon. I'm going to put a link below. And if you just want to support me, put in like $1, $2, $5 a month or whatever. Check out Patreon. And with that, let's go back to the process. So here we go with the rest of Wet and Wet. I zoomed in a bit because I want you to see all the details. Now, the key here is keep it off not as a pattern this easier said than done and everyone will have their own approach some people enjoy patterns that's fine do whatever you want what i like to do with these is to convey something that's loose and even a bit wild right this is nature it's wild the things are organized and an at a certain pattern that has a lot of randomness to it okay now i want you to understand something very important by this point, you're looking at it and you're like, maybe you love it. Maybe you're unsure of where to continue if you're painting along with me or if you're painting this separately. You're like, how do I continue? You actually finished like 70 to 80% of the painting easy and definitely 90% of the hard part. The rest is to render the details in the shadows. So we have this beautiful shadow in between the peaks. We have a beautiful shadow in the lower right corner. And in between, we have patterns. Okay, now I want to show you a few important concepts. Again, you paint it however you want. You can actually fill in everything else differently than I did. You can make it your own. And it's one point I keep stressing. Stop following tutorials at some point and make it your own. Either don't look at what I'm doing, but paint the same photo, 
or take your own photos and paint them. But here are a few concepts you can loan and bo borrow rather into your own painting. So what I'm doing right now is rendering some details and this is vastly easier than doing wet and wet, trust me, because the technique is much more straightforward. You're simply drawing the details, okay? It's painting, but you're actually drawing. But here's one thing that's fairly important. Try and have some kind of an organization uh, overall in all of the details you put. One way of doing this is doing some large shapes like the one I'm doing right now, something that's a little more prominent. Another way of doing this is to merge together shapes. So if you reach a point where it feels a little confusing, maybe a bit messy, take the water sprayer and simply spray a bit of water on it. It will smoothen it out and blend it together. I'm doing here something similar. I'm just bringing in water with my brush. Look at what happens, it unifies it. And it gives you more time if you now wanna do wet and wet and let the wet and wet lead the way and drip. If you feel like you're placing too many individual small shapes, take uh, the brush with some clean water Take a water sprayer, help it spread a bit, and you actually have a preparation here to also add some details later on in wet and wet if you want to while it's still wet. And again, wet and wet is a technique. It's not necessarily the easiest one. Here I am leaving a few interesting highlights. You're going to see these come into play later on. Wet and wet isn't necessarily the easiest technique, right? This technique is something that you need to work towards and, and, uh, and improve at, right? It's not something that just happens. It is something you want to practice, make sure you got a good, um, a good, uh, a good understanding of and, and kind of practice in a dry way. But once you do, I urge you to let the technique, right? Let the, 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 the technique become secondary and let your impression and your desired result lead the way, because that's how you make art rather than just an illustration. No disrespect to illustrations, of course, but something that is meant to sing rather than illustrate or exemplify or give a, you understand what I mean. So, and everyone can do this, right? Even people who usually do illustrations can do this. That's how you make it into a piece of art or uh, something more than just a photo, let's say. Now, what you'll notice me do is actually actually lift up the board a bit because now I want to control the wet and wet. I want to control the angle at which I do this, which is by the way, why I always recommend have a board, tape the painting, the, the piece of paper onto that board. And so you actually have control over it and you're not just taping it to a desk that you can't move. This is very important. Um, now I filled in this entire shape because what did I tell you? Too many fragmented details can sometimes, um, in my opinion, make a bit of a fragmented and, and messy impression. So I unified a lot of shapes, I'm bringing in water, remember that ambiguous corner, right? All I care about is that to have something there it doesn't have to be um, very well defined. In fact, it's better if it's not. And you'll notice that the left corner does the same thing because there's a lot of wet and wet. And look at how beautifully that left corner has dried. Uh, and not just the corner, the mountain leading up to it, okay? One thing you did uh, probably notice is the change in uh, hue, in color. So, so far I've been using only phthalo blue, but I slowly started introducing two more colors, pretty much, phthalo blue and neutral tint, started introducing two more colors. One of them is quinacridone rose, and the other one is uh, yellow ochre. The yellow ochre is by M. Graham, this is very important because it's the best yellow ochre I've used so far, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it's at least one of the best, um, better than other brands for sure. So this gives us a bit more interest in the colors. It pushes the blue to be a little more purple, but just a touch, a little more green, a little more yellow even, a little more, we didn't get to orange because this is a very cool painting, right? So our warmth here is just the the, the slight um, purple. Um, and very important, more gray, which is also uh, something that is to be desired. Why? Because if everything is very saturated, nothing really sticks out. But when you do these shadows with all of their nuance in colors and grays and not just pure strong blues, what does it do to the sky that is a pure blue? It makes it immediately pop and become more prominent. And so you get a double whammy of, we have beautiful transitions in the sky, we have a strong color in the sky, and together these two just create a beautiful focal point, which funny enough is 
kind of the sky and how it meets the mountains, right? The the strong the strongest contrast is pretty much the top right corner between the sky and the mountain. Um, we have some stronger contrasts as well of white next to almost black, uh, but, but that's pretty much it. Uh, now I'm starting to do these small indications of shapes using the side of my brush, which is something very useful for when you're putting in these uh, patterns of snow uh, and rocks showing through the snow, right? And and always remember what it is that you're painting. If you're getting confused, like what are all these shapes? Think about it. Zoom in a bit. Look at it from up close, and you'll see. Oh, these are the rocky patterns, the rocks that show through the snow. It will help you. Okay. Um, now, so I'm doing this now. If you're struggling with that, first use cold press paper or rough paper. It makes it much easier. And then also dry the brush on a paper towel, soak it with color, then dry it, and then use it once it's a little drier and use the side, you'll have an easier time. Practice this on an isolated piece of paper, you'll get it, okay? Now I'm starting to feel like this is a bit too much information, too much fragmented. So in a second, you'll see me taking the water sprayer and spraying this a bit and helping it spread out and loosen out. And this is one more thing you can do to improve the um, overall flow of the painting. Now this corner, this transition felt a little too harsh. We have a soft transition, a bit of a hard transition, but this was again for me needed to be softer. So I'm softening it, it's up to personal taste. To you maybe it didn't bother you as much, but it did bother me and it, it took some attention from the peak of the mountain too. Uh, and in any case here I am signing this painting. We're gonna remove the tape together. I love these kinds of scenes where it's painted all around. It's not just an object with a white background so that removing the tape actually has a strong impact. And I'm gonna show you the scanned result too because it looks so much better always. Um, and as we move through these again think about it if you really want to take your watercolors to the next level be sure to check out my courses. Sometimes it's the right time to practice on your own. Other times it is a very good idea to use an external tool to help you leapfrog and then you can go back to learning on your own. In fact, I encourage that as you know, uh, but I do think you'll find them helpful. Here you can see the nuance of the color a little better. I really hope you enjoyed this one. This is my time to thank you so, so much for watching all the way till the end. Um, if you can leave a comment and let me know what your favorite part of the process is, I'm curious to hear. Um, I'm also leave a like, subscribe if you still aren't, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.